This is the Louis T Network. For me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to the 2018 NFL playoffs here on the Louis T. Network. As your man, Louis T., gives you wall-to-wall coverage of everything that happens in the National Football League's 2018 playoffs. And now we're in the divisional round of the postseason where the big boys come out to play. And uh, this is a big one. This may end up being the best game of the weekend, sort of like last week. They saved the best for last. Panthers-Saints probably was the most intriguing game start to finish of any of the postseason games in wildcard weekend. And I think we may be in store for a lot of the same in the final game of divisional round weekend as the number four seeded Saints in the NFC take on the second seeded Minnesota Vikings in the NFC divisional round of the postseason. This is going to be an epic game. You're talking about a defensive genius in Sean Payton taking on a defensive genius in Mike Zimmer. We've seen how these types of games go in the past. Uh, Rarely does the offensive team win out in these situations. It's a little different now because the Saints actually can play a little bit of defense of their own now. But At the end of the day, the Vikings are the alpha male when it comes to defense in this football game. And generally, in these types of matchups, the team with the better defense finds a way to get it done. Not to mention the Vikings are at home. But the X factor in this game is Case Keenum, which is where we start with this Minnesota Vikings team coming off of the bye. And uh, I I keep waiting. And I I was having an interesting discussion with my dad. And me and him chop it up all the time. He's a huge football fan, much like myself. He's the reason... I'm a football fan the way that I am now. And uh, we were having a discussion about the Minnesota Vikings and Case Keenum. And we've had this discussion all year long because much like myself, he's been waiting for that other shoe to drop with Case Keenum. He's been waiting for the real Case Keenum to stand up and show himself. And at, I'd say the midpoint of the season, he said, look, this guy has figured it out. The light bulb has come on for Case Keenum. And he's good now. And I'm, I refuse to believe it. Then I saw the Thanksgiving performance versus the Detroit Lions in which Case Keenum took over that football game. Then I watched him go and, and beat the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Wasn't the highest scoring game, but every correct throw that needed to be made, every play that needed to be extended, every third down that was crucial and vital to the success of the Vikings in that game, Case Keenum came up huge in that game and made the plays to help them win. And I was sold. I said, God damn it, Case Keenum, you bastard. Maybe you have figured it out. And so I keep waiting. And and now I've come up with a new excuse, okay? This is my last Case Keenum excuse. I don't have any more left. This is the last one that I'm banking on is the fact that Case Keenum will not play the same because it's the playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah, it's the playoffs. And all of a sudden now things become more real. And my dad said, well, he doesn't have to look over his shoulder. It's his team. He's comfortable. He's got it. He's figured it out. And I'm like, yeah, but this is the playoffs. Playoffs? Yes, the playoffs. Where anything can happen, the real recognize is real. And Case Keenum right now is looking very unfamiliar. So I'm looking at Case Keenum and I'm I'm like, hey, bruh, it's the playoffs. You ready for this? Case is saying, you're damn right I am. But I don't know if I believe him. So we're going to see. Because this Saints defense, they're good enough to create some issues. Cam Jordan and that group up front, good enough to put a little bit of pressure on Case Keenum. Anxious to see what he does in the face of pressure. Um, He's handled pressure well this season. There have been some times where he has made some foolish mistakes. But for the most part, he's kept those foolish mistakes to a minimum and made all of the plays necessary to put this team in a position to be the first ever to host the Super Bowl in their home facility, which would be a crazy scene in Minnesota um, and an advantage, the likes of which we've never seen in the Super Bowl. But you've got to win two games in order to get to that point if you're the Minnesota Vikings. So we're a long way from having that discussion, but Case Keenum and his play is going to go a long way in determining if they can, in fact, get there. But it's not all on Case Keenum. Let's not act as if the Vikings can't run the football because 
One of the most pleasant surprises of the season for the Vikings after you get past the offensive line, after you get past Case Keenum, is, of course, that of uh, Latavius Murray, a guy that you got in free agency but probably weren't expecting a lot out of, especially after drafting Dalvin Cook and having him fall in your lap. And with the start to the season that Cook had, it didn't look like there were going to be many touches nor snaps for Latavius Murray in this season for this Vikings football team between Dalvin Cook and the secret weapon shh, known as Jarek McKinnon. I didn't think there would be many snaps, touches, nor carries for uh, Latavius Murray in this offense. But then Dalvin Cook goes down in that first meeting with the Lions and in comes Latavius Murray. And that offseason signing and acquisition looks like a godsend at this point because your run game has not missed a beat. Murray is playing at a very high level. He's balancing out this offense. You've got weapons at the skill positions in Diggs and Thielen. And, and Kyle Rudolph is still getting it done at the tight end position. And so all of a sudden now, you couple that with a run game and a quarterback that can get all of those weapons, the football. And this has become a dangerous offense in Minnesota. Dangerous enough to the point where um, they can beat you on defense. They can also beat you on offense as well. And um, they've also got a secret weapon in their back pocket and Marcus Sherrill's in the punt return game as well. So you don't want to sleep there. So uh, this Vikings team, they can run it, they can throw it, and special teams is also an asset for them uh, when things are going well. Now, uh, in order to beat the Saints, though, on the offensive side of the football, what you're going to have to do is what the Panthers did a week ago, and that's take advantage of matchups against the Vic uh, against the Saints. Um, last week, Cam Newton, he didn't have a ton of targets, as we all know, but the ones that he did have, he took advantage. One of those guys was Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield. The Saints, while they have some, some speed defensively, they don't have a ton of it at the linebacker position. That's where you can hurt them. You can exploit them with a one-on-one -on -one matchup out of the backfield. Christian McCaffrey hurt them in that game over 100 yards receiving, including a big catch and run for a touchdown on an arrow route over the middle of the field in which he smoked Craig Robertson and then smoked the rest of that defense on his way to the end zone. You can exploit that, whether it be Murray out of the backfield, but preferably the secret weapon known as Jarek McKinnon out of the backfield. That should be a matchup worth circling if you're the Minnesota Vikings. Also, their tight end, um, Greg Olson, had a field day. Also over 100 yards in that game. Kyle Rudolph can do much of the same. Again, the weakness of that Saints defense is their linebackers. You can take advantage of their linebackers in coverage. Greg Olson did it a week ago. I surmise you should be able to do much of the same with Kyle Rudolph. He's the same type of tight end as Greg Olson. I think you can win those matchups all day long. Now the corners, different story. Uh, I love Marshawn Lattimore. He's probably going to be matched up uh, on the evening uh, with your best receiver, in my mind, Adam Thielen. At least he's been this season. Uh, I think you're going to have to take advantage of Ken Crawley, who struggled last week versus Carolina. And wh whomever he's covering, that's where the ball should be going 95% of the time when it's not going to one of your backs or tight ends um, out of the backfield. So uh, th there are matches you, you can take advantage of against this Saints defense. Ken Crawley is a guy that I would go after. I would go after the linebackers. If I get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Kyle Rudolph against a safety or a backer, I'll take it. And any matchup with your running back one-on-one -on -one with any of their linebackers, that's a win for you in the pass game as well. But if you can establish the run, that'll go a long way in determining this football game, taking a lot off the plate of Case Keenum. But again, uh, the Panthers struggle to uh, run the football, which they've had a problem running it all season long. You have had success running it this season. We'll see. That week one matchup, that is so far behind us. These are two vastly different teams. The Saints didn't know who they were. They didn't know what they were sitting on in Alvin Kamara at the time. They were still dealing with the Adrian Peterson conundrum. This is a totally different team. The defense has confidence now. They had zero in week one. So that week one matchup, you can go ahead and throw that out of the window. These are two vastly different teams at this point of the season. You look at the Vikings defense. This is probably more realistically. I've said all of that about the Vikings defense, but this is probably more realistically where the game will be won if the Vikings are able to get the win on defense. They've got one of the nastiest, ferocious, most ferocious defenses in the league. I've been doubting this defense. Not disrespecting because 
I know what this defense is capable of, but I've been doubting them because my Redskins put up 30 on this Vikings defense, and we moved the ball with pretty much ease against the Vikings in that game. But what I'm starting to believe is that they just looked at us and laughed. They felt bad for us. They treated us like a charity case because they said, oh, the Redskins stink. They're not good. They have no playmakers. And they, they underestimated us, and we put 30 on their skull and went up and down the field. But when I watched them against some of the league's better offensive football teams, i.e. the Rams, i.e. the Falcons, I watched a team systematically take apart these offenses and leave the parts scattered on the field for that team to put back together to try to make a semblance of what they once were on the offensive side of the football for the following week's game. I watched them take the best third down offense in the league in the Atlanta Falcons and reduce them to one of the worst in that particular game. I watched them take the most high scoring team in the league at just around 30 a game in the Rams and reduce them to seven points and made them look pedestrian on offense. So this is a Vikings defense that can get after the quarterback with their front four. They don't have to blitz, but when they do, we do know the blitz of choice by uh, Mike Zimmer. Uh, the professor loves the double A gap blitz up the middle. You never know when those guys are coming. They bluff it on just about every third down. And so are they coming? Aren't they coming? You just don't know. You can't be sure. Xavier Rhodes is the, no, the new definition of a lockdown corner in this league. He's going to harass the Saints' best receiver in Michael Thomas. Wherever he goes, 29 is probably going to follow. You're going to see Michael Thomas on the ground a couple of times because he got body slammed by Xavier Rose. He plays a physical brand of football. And as we all know, in the playoffs, the refs tend to let you get away with a little bit extra physicality, which Xavier Rose doesn't need to be able to get away with that because he gets enough with away with enough physicality as it is, as Vikings fans always say, all roads closed. I don't know if Michael Thomas is going to be an impact player for you this week if you're the Saints. So again, defensively, I fully expect those linebackers and Kendricks and Barr to be able to run and make plays. I love this defensive line with Linval Joseph and all of those guys and Daniil Hunter up front. And of course, the ringleader of the group in Everson Griffin. Those guys can apply pressure without blitzing. The secondary with Harrison Smith, who is an all-pro, first-team all-pro this season, along with his running mate, also a first-pro, uh, a first-team all-pro in um, Xavier Rhodes. Those guys lock it down in the secondary. If you're going to attack somebody, it's going to have to be Trey Waynes, but they do a pretty good job of protecting him. This defense is phenomenal. If you stop the run like Carolina did last week, they stifled the run game of the Saints and forced Drew Brees to beat them. Problem was, Drew Brees is Drew Brees and fully capable of putting 350 on your ass if you're not careful. This is a different brand of defense that he'll be going up against. Highly unlikely that he'll be putting up 300 and anything against this Vikings defense. So if you can stop the run, sort of like the Panthers did a week ago, and force Drew Brees to beat, beat you, you've got a great shot at coming away with the victory and advancing to the championship game where you could find yourself hosting that game if the Eagles aren't able to get the win. You go to the Saints in this game, and I look at this Saints football team, and I want to start on the defensive side of the football because much like the Vikings, that ultimately may be where you have to win this game because I don't expect a ton out of your offense against this vaunted Vikings defense in Minnesota. They play a different brand of football at home versus the road. On the road, they gave up 30 to the Redskins. They gave up 31 to the Panthers with a ton of turnovers and mistakes. On the road on Thanksgiving, they gave up 20-some-odd points to the Lions and should have lost that football game. But at home, at home this season, they've been lights out defensively. And so because of that, you're probably going to have to ratchet it up a few notches on defense. You're going to have to be way better than you were against the Panthers a week ago. And again, that's family business. So I'm not going to take too much of what was done last week and extrapolate it to this game because family members know each other best. This is a different entity, a different animal, but you're going to have to play better. Ken Crawley going to have to play better than he did last week. The linebackers can't get roasted in the pass game. You can't give up 100 yards to the opposing team's tight end. You got to clean all of that stuff up. If you're going to 
find a way to win on the road against a dangerous defense, you're going to have to play some dangerous defense of your own. Cam Jordan and company going to have to do what they did last week. They absolutely dominated the game up front and controlled the line of scrimmage by stopping the run of the Panthers and doubling down and destroying Cam Newton, hitting him 12 times, sacking him five of those times, and making life a living hell. Despite Cam Newton's big day throwing the football, he paid for it. And if you can get to Case Keenum, Case Keenum is not Cam Newton, okay? Case Keenum, you get to him 12 times, I assure you, you will come away with at least one, if not multiple turnovers. So the key is to do what you did last week, up front in the trenches, get pressure. Cam Jordan is going to have to play the game of his life. You need guys to continue to step up. Daniel Anyamata and all of those other guys. Uh, Tyler Davison got pressure last week. You, you need all of these guys to step up. Sheldon Rankins, you're going to need players to step up. It'd be nice to see Trey Hendrickson get pressure on the quarterback. You're going to need to make it a group effort up front. You're going to need to get after the quarterback. You're going to have to help out your secondary and your linebackers by getting pressure on Case Keenum. Stopping the run is first and foremost your primary objective because if they establish a run, it'll make everything so much harder for you to contain. All of a sudden now, the bootleg, which they love to run with Case Keenum and get him outside of the pocket, is all in play. All of a sudden now, they're going play action fake. Your linebackers are biting and the dig route over the middle of the field is wide open, or the post to Thielen down the field. And don't be confused because he's white. The boy isn't slow. The man can go much faster than slow. So if you want to trip and slip, Adam Thielen can get you for six. And so between him and Diggs and, and, and Kyle Rudolph, they can hurt you in the pass game if you don't apply pressure to Case Keenum. But before we even get to that, stopping the run and making them one-dimensional will give you the best opportunity to win. And you could use a turnover or two in this game. You, you weren't really able to generate a ton of turnovers last week. You could use a, a few mistakes in this game. You could use some short fields against a really good, aggressive Vikings defense. You could use a short field or two. And so... Um, Defense is going to have to be huge because ultimately your offense may be stagnant in this game. It may only be able to supply you with 13. Your offense might have or your defense might have to make 13 enough, might have to make 16 enough, might have to make 19 enough. This is not going to be like last week's game where you get into the 30s and have to preserve 31 points. You may only have 16 or 19 to work with in this game. Can your defense make that stick? If not, you're not, I can assure you of this. If 19 isn't enough in this game, you won't beat the Minnesota Vikings. If you can make 16 or 19 enough, you may be able to get out of there with a victory. This is one game where your run game, speaking of which, let's get to your offense. And we'll come back and circle around before I give you my prediction. Offense, um, offensively, Drew Brees was phenomenal last week. All right. And that's what I was talking about, having that, that, that ace in your back pocket. It's great when the defense is better and you can run it and be balanced, but when all else fails, it's good to turn around and say, A9, I need it tonight. I need it. And have him deliver. That being said, the run game is going to have to give you something. They gave you nothing. Both of them. Nothing in the pass game, nothing in the run game. They're going to have to give you something in this game because I can assure you, Drew Brees will not have the field day he had last week against this Vikings defense. He won't have it like he did against the Panthers because this defense is a different animal. Xavier Rhodes, Michael Thomas by himself had about a buck 30 by himself. Buck is some change for sure, all right? Might have been north of a buck 30. Might have been closer to a buck 50 than a buck 30. In any event, you can cancel that this game. Xavier Rhodes is taking that man out of the game. So Teddy Ballgame is going to have to step up. Willie Sneed, who only had one grab, he's going to have to step up. Brandon Coleman, who I always call the X factor in the pass game, going to have to step up. You better put the goddamn football away, young fella. You're going to have to have other guys step up and make plays in the pass game because, hey, you had an unsung hero last week in Hill. He may have to step up and be another unsung hero again because you're not getting Michael Thomas like you did last week. 
He's not open like he was last week. And if he is getting catches, he's working for every single one of them, and they won't be huge chunk plays like they were a week ago. Uh, so the thing that you have to know is that the run game, and those, and even if they don't hurt the Vikings in the run game and they got to hurt them in the pass game, you have to have those backs be more productive than they were last week because I just don't see Drew Brees having the kind of gaudy numbers last week that was able to will you to a victory. I just don't see that happening this particular week. Will Lutz is going to have to be clutch like he was last week, drilling one from 58 last week. Going to need him to do that again. You're inside, confined, controlled environment. If you have to, again, this is one of those games where you may need four field goals to win you the game. Okay, one touchdown, four field goals. May be all you're able to muster. And those 19 points, every single one of them of the utmost importance. You can't afford to miss field goal in this game because I'm telling you right now, this could be one of those games that comes down to a late miss or a late make in the game. And that is ends up being the deciding factor. Um, all in all, the running game, the running backs in particular, not necessarily the running game, the running backs in particular have to be a bigger part of the action this week. They can't be spectators. They have to be huge participators. If they're watching this game and not participating, you're in trouble because then you're relying on Drew Brees to do what he did last week. And although I love Drew Brees and feel like he's fully capable, defense wins in, in the playoffs, and there aren't many better defenses currently left in the playoffs than this Minnesota Vikings football team. They don't have two all-team first pros, all first team, uh, first team all pros in that secondary for no reason. They're there for a reason, and those boys ball. So um, I said all of that to say this. My heart says Saints. I think they're very capable of going in there and winning. But my head says, are you stupid? How many times are you going to doubt the Vikings? How many times are you going to pull the Case Keenum card and get burnt? And anyway, you know the rules to the game. Then play. It's playoff football. Defense wins. Offense lose. Okay? When you put great offense versus great defense and they collide, normally the great defense wins. Nine times out of ten. Most times, ten times out of ten. But in this particular case, that Vikings defense, man, I've, I've underestimated them at times this season. This isn't one of those times I'm willing to do it. Thus, my pick, 23 to 19. That 19, I, I fully expect the Saints to get to 19. The question then becomes, can you make 19 stick? In this instance, with my prediction, 19 isn't enough. Your defense doesn't do enough to make 19 enough. If your defense can make 19 enough, I'm going to tell you this right now with 100% certainty. You heard it here first. You hold the Vikings to less than 19 in this game. You will win. If the Vikings score more than 19 points, you lose. You're not getting more than 19. And if you do, I'll be surprised and I'll be the first one to tell you after the game, you got me. Hands up. You got me. Go ahead, lock me up. You got me. I don't see it happening. 19 is the best you can do. And if you are able to hold the Vikes to less than 19, you're going to win this game. We'll see what happens. I think this is going to be an excellent game. High stakes. Lot of excitement in that, uh, in that stadium because they haven't been here in a while. They haven't had a team this good since 1998, well, I'm disrespecting the Brett Favre season where you had a chance. What was that, 2012? Was that 2012? Nah, it wasn't that recent, was it? That's more like 2010, 11, something like that. In any event, this is the first time they've had it at the new stadium. They're going to be raucous. It's going to be charged because they know they've got a chance to do something no NFL team's ever done. Host a Super Bowl. All they got to do is win two games. Here's the first of those two. Saints, you got a big test on your hands. We're going to find out just how prepared you are for the test. You've got the number two pencil. You've got the Scantron. Do you have the right answers? We'll find out. In any event, I'm your man, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't already done so, what are you waiting on? Subscribe to the Louis T Network for more great content in 2018 and beyond. We're changing the game. I want you to help us do that by simply hitting that subscribe button and becoming a member of the Louis T Network. So those are my preview and predictions for all of the games in 
uh, divisional round weekend. What are yours? I need it in the comment section. Who's going to win this game and why? I got to know. I got to have it. Like the video, share the video, and I need that comment. I'll be looking for your predictions in the comment section of all of these videos as to who is going to win these games. And I wouldn't mind a nice little explanation as to why. But look, beggars can't be choosers. I just need to know who's going to win the game. If I can get a little explanation as to why, I'll take it. In any event, I'm your man, Louis T. Signing off. Thanks for joining me. I will see you next time.